Now that you know how to open your case the right way, we need to investigate all the pieces that are inside your case so we know what to do first and we know what we can leave in the case for a little while. Now, for this first week, we're not going to put the whole clarinet together. We're just going to build the top because that's the part that makes the sound and it takes a long time to learn how to put it together. So we'll start with the hardest part and that'll be our challenge for this week. The first thing I want you to do is look into your case. You have a lot of pieces in this clarinet case because there are a lot of pieces of the clarinet. So I want you to investigate some things, okay? The first thing I want you to look for is your mouthpiece. Now your mouthpiece is probably laying flat in the case, okay? It's probably laying like this with a plastic piece over the top, okay? So the first thing I would like you to do is put your fingers on the screws and pull off this cap. This is your mouthpiece cap or cover, okay? You don't play with this on. This is just to protect it um, in the case. So we take the cap off, okay? We put that back in the case, okay? Now the next thing I need you to do is, you can put your mouthpiece down for a second. By the way, your mouthpiece should have a metal piece on it with screws called the ligature. We'll talk about that in a second. That should stay on right now. So you can put this whole thing down, okay? And I want you to look for something that looks like this. It might be in a plastic case, like this. It might be in a paper sleeve. And this is your reed. This is the part of the clarinet that makes a sound. So if you don't have a reed, even if you build your entire clarinet correctly, no reed equals no sound, okay? Let's talk about this reed, okay? Reeds are breakable. They are supposed to last for like a month or two and you can use them for a month or two as long as you don't break them. So let's talk about how to not break your reed, okay? First of all, if you have this kind of case where there's like a place for your fingers to grab it on the side, that's okay, you would slide it out sideways. Some of you have a reed, it might be in a wrapper, so you need to like unwrap it so you can see the little piece of wood in the plastic. If it's in a, in a paper sleeve, it's just with the tip down, Okay, so what we can do is pull our reed out of the case. Okay, just put the little reed case down into your case. Remember, we're gonna do keep holding things in our lap, so make sure your feet are flat on the floor, so you're making a table for your case. Okay, let's investigate our reed. The reed has two ends, and you're noticing that I'm touching the fat part, okay? This little skinny part with the round edge on the top, if you break that, chip it, crack it, a piece like bends off, you have to put the reed in the trash can, okay? So we don't touch the tip. We only touch the fat part. That fat part is probably the part with writing and maybe a number. You guys should be on a number two reed or a two and a half reed, but number two is good for beginners, okay? And then we want to investigate the reed. I want you to keep flipping it over so you can see the top and the bottom, okay? The bottom, the back of the reed has the writing and it's totally flat, okay? The front of the reed is like, has a curvy, a curvy top, okay? This is actually a piece of bamboo that's been cut in half and then shaved down. So in order for the reed to work, it needs to be wet. And, this, and you can see, you're gonna see why we don't share reeds, okay? Um, you're gonna put this in your mouth on your tongue, but you don't let your teeth touch it, right? Because your teeth could bite through this by mistake or chip it. So we just want to suck on it till, with our own spit so it gets wet. And the way that we do that is find the letters or the words so that and face them to the ceiling so that you're going to stick the part that says Rico or whatever kind of read you have, put that up to the sky. And the little tip is going to go right on your tongue and you're gonna keep getting it wet with your spit. Yes, it tastes like wood because it's made out of wood. The first time you suck on it is the worst that it tastes. After you get it wet a couple times, it does not taste bad, okay? So I'm gonna take mine out of my mouth, but while we're working to build our mouthpiece, your reed should look like this, okay? And you're getting it wet. You're not crunching on it. You're not biting it. You're just putting spit on it with your tongue, okay? I'm gonna put mine down so I can keep talking. So you have your reed in your mouth. Yeah, it might taste a little woody, but you get used to it, okay? The next thing while you're sucking on your reed, I want you to look for in your case is a little tube. It looks like chapstick. 
This is not chapstick. I would hope that if you thought it was chapstick and you smelled it, you would realize it's not chapstick. This is cork grease. We need to use this when we put our clarinet together. So you can take the cap off the cork grease, make sure a little bit is sticking up on the top so that we can use it. We can put the cap in our case, okay? We're gonna use the cork grease on our mouthpiece. This is cork, okay? Cork is what holds the clarinet together. When you push it together, the cork goes inside the other piece and holds it in. If your cork is dry, you won't be able to push the pieces together. So we take our cork grease and we go around. We don't smash it so it comes out the side, just kind of like you're doing chapstick, okay? And that's it, just a little, a little uh, layer of cork grease. Yes, there are other corks on your clarinet. Yes, we will use cork grease when we go to the other cork. So for right now, we can put the cap back on the cork grease and put it back in the case. Okay, the next piece I need you to find is called the barrel. It looks like a barrel, okay? So our barrel, in, in some of the cases, it's sticking straight down into the case. In other cases, it's laying sideways. Okay, this is the barrel. So pull that out. And then what you can, right now, you can put your case on the floor because we don't need anything else out of the case. So you put it flat on the floor. If you, want, if you want to do one latch to make sure it doesn't spill open when you pick it up again, that's fine. Okay, so if you need to put your case on the floor, pause the video, put your case on the floor, and then come back and press play. Okay, so we got our barrel. We have our mouthpiece with our ligature. Here's the deal. The ligature needs to come off the top, and the way we do this is we make the screws loose. Now, not loose so their screws are just sitting in your hand, loose so that it can go up and down like this, okay? So on most ligatures, to make the screw loose, you turn the little screw towards yourself, okay? So that you can make it go up and down, up and down. Let me show you what it looks like when it's tight. So I'm actually turning it away from me, right, to make it tight. Um, tight means it can't move at all. So yeah, that, that's not the right way because I can't get off. It doesn't come off the bottom, it only comes off the top. Okay, so I'm loosening my screws enough so that I can take the ligature off the top. You can put it in your lap, put it on the floor, whatever. Okay, so now we have mouthpiece all by itself. We have barrel all by itself. Now I'll show you my mouthpiece. I have a special tooth guard on my mouthpiece so that when I, it's a like a rubber sticker. So when I bite onto my mouthpiece with my teeth, I don't put a dent in my clarinet mouthpiece. Uh, you can buy these little stickers for a couple dollars, but you don't need them. They're not necessary. Okay, you, my mouthpiece has a, a brand on it. Yours might say a brand, it might not. And then you see my cork here. Okay, so we need to attach these two pieces. Uh, they only go one way, so this would not be the way, right? That's not going to stick in. So spin it around, and you need to push it so there's no crack. Some people like to push it like on your leg, push it flat down so that there's no crack there, okay? Um, if it's really hard to push on, you need to put a little more cork grease here. That means it was too dry. Okay, so we push it all the way on, and now you have the top part of your clarinet. Now, I know your reed's still in your mouth, so pull out your reed. Remember, we only touch the fat part on the bottom. We do not touch up here, because if you touch here, it cracks off as soon as a piece is missing. This is like a perfect circle here, okay? Because look at the top of your mouthpiece. It's the same circle, okay? So what I want you to do is the part of your reed that's flat in the back with the words goes flat against the hole on your mouthpiece. It does not fit in the hole. And by the way, this is the hard, hardest part about putting it together. Okay, it doesn't fit in the hole. It covers the hole exactly. Okay, so check it out. I'm gonna show you the back. You shouldn't be able to see the reed sticking out. If I go like this, uh oh, that's not good. That means when you put it in your mouth, you'd crack the top off. Okay, same thing, if you put it too low, look at this side. That's not good, because that's not lining up. So I'm gonna, look where I'm touching it. I'm touching it on the sides, because I'm not allowed to touch that part. So I slide it up to the top part. Now this is the hardest part of doing the clarinet, of putting it together, 
I would say this is harder than playing it, to be honest with you. So when you think you have it lined up, here comes the hard part. You got to hold it with your thumb while you grab your ligature because something has to hold the reed on, right? Okay. Here's the hard part. So if you haven't gotten this attached yet or you don't think it's lined up the right way, just press pause, you know, move it around a little bit. You can rewind, okay? And then keep your finger on here. Okay, your ligature only goes one way. So check it out. This side is bigger than this side. So if I put it on upside down, hmm. I know people like to say, Miss Block, I think it's broken. Well, no, you have it upside down. So find the fat part of the fat side of the rings and we slide it over the reed. Notice I have it so that the screws hit the reed. Now, if your screws aren't loose enough, your ligature isn't going to hold in the right spot. So check it out. I made it loose enough so that it's below. My mouthpiece actually has a line here, but it needs to be below that. If your ligature is all the way up here, like all halfway up, your clarinet's not going to make any noise. So we, and then if you notice the tip of your reed moved by mistake, that's okay. Put your hands on the on the fingers on the side, move it around with your thumb, and then put your ligature where you think it should be. You're going to tighten your ligature screws by turning away from you. Okay, because that's to the right. Now, here's the thing. Uh, your reed probably got dry in the time that it took us to do this. So what I need you to do right now is lick your reed. While it's on here, do not let your teeth touch the tip of the reed, just your tongue, because we need this to be wet. Okay, so once you have a whole piece that looks like this, I have my mouthpiece, I have my ligature, I have my barrel, and the reed is attached. So I'll let you take a look at this. Okay, if yours doesn't look quite like this, or maybe your ligature is moving up and down, tighten your screws. This is the hardest spot, the hardest part about putting the clarinet together. Our goal is to do this part in under a minute by the end of next week. So that's what you're going to be working on. Once you have this put together, you can go to the next video and we're going to talk about making our first sound.